All right, so I wanted to make a quick video for you on the structured walking aspect of the relationship with your dog. So if we're putting this into little puzzle pieces, shaping, that means working with food, is a way to build relevance. So that's something that I typically do in very low distraction environments where the dog is not tempted to just kind of blow me off. Um, I'm gonna make sure this is recording and put us on do not disturb for a second. Um, so that's all done beforehand, before I get out in public, before there's other distractions that are competing with her attention on me. So in the beginning, what I do is I build that relevance in the home with very low distraction, and then we proof that as we get further uh, to, to the end of the training. So um, a quick equipment review of what we're using today is just a 10 foot long leash, just a very simple long leash. Um, I can't really handle a leash right now because of my back. So what's nice is she actually is really, really good on the leash. She doesn't really struggle with the walking stuff anymore. But what I wanted to show you is I wanted you to see um, how I start the walk so that I can make sure that that relevance continues to remain steadfast and also that she continues to put that respect on me and have the relationship that she needs. So. Um, if shaping is what creates relevance, structured walking is what creates relationship because she has to learn to follow you. She has to learn to not be leading out in front. So in order to accomplish that, you want to make sure that you are, you want to make sure that you are keeping her kind of in this pocket back here. Um, it's pretty simple. If you, if you take a look at, you know, a homeless person who spends all day with their dog, where is the human walking and where is the dog walking? The dog's usually back here. You know how much training they've probably done? Zero. It becomes a lifestyle because every day is a walk all day long. So the dog learns pretty quickly. My human's gonna advocate for me. They're not gonna put me in a situation that is um, too stressful. They're not gonna put me in a situation that could get me hurt. So it creates a really nice relationship and a trust between the dog and the owner. So. I, I need to trust her, yes, but she needs to trust that I'm also not gonna let a dog come up and charge after us or anything like that. So right now, when I'm stopped, I usually expect her to be in a sit, but we haven't started doing any sort of control work yet. So as I start to step into this exercise, my main focus is to make sure that she understands what the expectation is, okay? So uh, this morning I have my 10 foot long lean. She's wearing her prong collar, it's double clipped because I wanna make sure that I'm not correcting too hard on the prong collar, especially out in public. But um, and essentially what I do usually is if I'm on a long leash, I double clip the prong collar to make sure that it doesn't give too firm of a correction. Now, if I'm holding the leash short, I usually will unclip that second loop and I'll just have the leash clipped to the swivel ring, okay? So the e-collar is also on and we're doing some very light e-collar conditioning specifically with the auto sit. So there's three parts of the structured walk. The first part is I wanna make sure that she's anticipating each turn and I wanna make sure that when I say let's go, which is her cue that, hey, we're gonna change direction now, that she goes and she swoops in with me instead of hitting the end of the leash. So it's a good cue for her to say, okay, I just heard let's go, I'm gonna now turn with him, okay? Um, so that's anticipation. The second thing that I'm looking for is attention to handler. So I want her constantly checking in with me. I want some really nice eye contact. And every time that she gives me that eye contact, I'm gonna say yes, and I'm gonna give her a little pet, okay? A little marker reward action there, good girl, all right? So all I'm gonna do here, I know that the path is curved, but I want you to imagine that we're just walking in a straight line right now, because ultimately, if you can't master walking, what is this, probably 50 to 75 feet, um, then you shouldn't be going out in the neighborhood. So what that means is if she's already out in front of me like this on our walk, then she's not respecting the relationship like she should, okay? So when we start here in a second, I'm gonna show you the three phases of turnabouts um, that we use to teach the dog to walk right next to us, all right? So the first phase is I'm gonna let her, I'm gonna hold the leash long. So this is a 10 foot leash, so I'm gonna hold it just at the very end and your leash grip should look like this, okay? It needs to go, thumb goes through the loop and you grab both sides just like that. 
all right? So that's your leash grip that you need to always have when you're taking her anywhere in public, when you're taking her anywhere for a walk, all right? So a lot of times people will ask, well, what if it's time for the dog to go pee, go poop, go sniff something, chase a squirrel, whatever, that's fine. I will then let the leash slack out and I'll say break and she can then go out into the grass, break. Good girl. She can go pee, she can go poop, she can go explore. Um, and then as soon as it's time to go again, I just say, let's go. And I start to turn around and walk and the dog goes, okay, now I'm gonna walk and heal, all right? So it's, there's a unstructured um, portion of a structured walk where you're able to say, I choose now that you can walk out in front of me, all right? But it's still structured because you can always call her back in the heel, okay? So step one, I'm gonna hold the leash long and I'm gonna be turning away from the dog, okay? That's it. Leash long, turning away from the dog. I'm gonna say, let's go. Let's go. Good. Let's go. Good. So she already knows this obviously, so she understands anticipation. But what I'm doing there is I'm turning. Every single time that I start to feel her about to go out in front of me, I'm saying, let's go, and I'm changing direction. Now, if she is paying attention to everything else except for me, what's gonna happen is she's gonna hit the end of that leash when I make that turn, okay? So if she's moving that way and I just turned, it's gonna go pop, pop right there. That's the action that you're looking for. So as you say, you say, let's go, pop, and she comes back with you again. And you notice I gave her that marker to say, hey, that was really good. So I'll say good girl or good, um, doesn't matter what you use, all right? So that was phase one. Now she already understands anticipation, so she didn't really hit the end of the leash at all. It was very light pressure. Um, phase two, I'm gonna do the same thing, but now the leash is gonna be walking distance or walking uh, uh, slack, walking, uh, whatever, whatever this uh, distance is from my hand to her neck, okay? So I'm gonna get my leash grip set. I'm gonna hold the rest of this just in my pointer finger like this, and I'm gonna say, let's go. Let's go. And again, changing directions every time she starts to go out in front. Let's go. Let's go. Notice I'm looking forward, I'm not looking down at her. Let's go. Let's go. And as I'm looking forward, if she starts to pop into my peripheral vision, let's go. That's when I start to make that turn. Let's go. If I start to see that little black head or that black nose down there, I know that I'm about to have to turn. Let's go. And the last part of phase two is as I come to a stop, I'm going to apply a tiny bit of pressure here until she goes into a set. Very good. She, she knows this stuff. She's very good at it. We've been doing it for three weeks now, so she should be looking like she's looking right now. That's enough. A little pressure. Yes. Good girl. Very nice. Okay. Now, the, the third thing that I mentioned, I mentioned the anticipation. I mentioned attention to handler. Um, the last thing is auto sit. So when I come to a stop, I actually want her to sit without me saying stop and eventually without me providing this pressure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a couple more reps with this phase two, and then I'm going to go to phase three where if she doesn't sit, then she gets a correction, all right? So I change from, okay, pressure until, um, until she offers the behavior to as little pressure as, po as possible, as much as is necessary. And um, what will happen is the dog will usually start to offer that behavior a lot more quickly. And if they don't, they get a little, a little leash pop, okay? Which is a little bit more than just the pressure, okay? All right, let's go.
As I come to a stop, slight pressure up and she's going into the set very quickly. So you see how quickly we can set that precedent of when I come to a stop, I want that butt on the ground. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> that morning voice. All right. So for phase three, so for phase one, it was long leash turning away from the dog. For phase two, it was short leash turning away from the dog. And for phase three, we're going to do short leash, so same as before, turning into the dog, okay? And what that's going to look like is not like this, but like this, okay? So I'm going to actually step in front of her, and in order to do that, I need to provide a little information as I'm making that turn so that I can stop constantly saying, let's go, all right? So I'm going to give her the cue with let's, I'm going to give her the little tug with the let's go a couple times, and after that, we're going to fade that out, all right? Let's go. Let's go. Good. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. Information. Let's go. Good. Yes, good girl. See that? It's just information, it's not a correction. A little information. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. All right. And as I come to a stop this time, I'm going to give her a couple seconds. Yes. And she sat. If she didn't sit, then I would then just give her a little leash pop. Which, when I say pop, I'm looking for a pop with a release. Okay. So it's not yank where you're yanking her one direction like that. It's also not pressure, where you're just turning on pressure, um, just like a flat pressure like we did before. It's a pop with a release, okay? And it's very light. You notice I'm not trying to correct her or anything. All we're doing now is giving her information on the leash, okay? So what the prong collar does is it allows us to give that pressure or to give that correction without hurting the dog or having them choke, because if you did this on a flat buckle collar, she would definitely be coughing and choking right now, okay? Now notice, I have the leash touching the ground. She came to the sit. Has she gotten up yet? No, she is not. Did I tell her to sit? No. Did I tell her to stay? No. Is she sitting and staying? Yes. If I stop to talk to a neighbor, will she lay down? Absolutely. Within two to three minutes, the dog will actually lay down and they'll just be able to chill. Okay, so you can, should be able to stop and talk to people and this is what she should do, all right? She doesn't need to go and meet every single dog that's out there. She doesn't need to go socialize every person that's out there, okay? If people ask you to pet your dog, especially if it's a service dog, the answer is typically going to be, I'm sorry, she's working right now, okay? If you know the person and you feel comfortable and you look at her and she looks pretty chill like this, you're welcome to say, Freak! Good girl! Freak. Good job! And then she can go meet the person, break or go say hi. Go say hi. Good girl. Even though there's a tree right there. So, <clears throat> so um, ideally, when you're on your structured walk, it's about you and the dog. All right? It's about nothing else. So what happens is a lot of times people will say, well, how do you fix reactivity? Reactivity is a human construct, right? Usually we are the ones who are focusing on that other thing, whatever it is, a decoy, a, a dog, a person, whatever it might be. So anytime that I'm looking at the structured walk from a, um, from a reactivity perspective, I always think, well, are you doing the things that I taught you in these three steps with loose, <laughs> loose leash turning away from the dog, um, short leash turning into the dog, short leash turning away from the dog. Um, are you doing those things properly first of all is the dog putting relevance on you are they making eye contact with you or are they already focused on 10,000 other things right so I told her break a second ago she's allowed to stand here and just stare at the woods so I'm paying her for that good girl you're doing so good good girl okay 
but then when it's time to walk, I'll say, let's go. Let's go. Good, and I didn't feel anything on the leash. That was perfect. And as I come to a stop, I'm gonna wait for that sit. Sit. And I'll use a little pressure if I have to. I gave her a pop there. She still didn't know what I was asking her to do. So I gave her a little bit of pressure and she sat, okay? So it's all about clear communication, okay? So, <coughs> <coughs> so just to review, the first step is your leash grip, right? Get your leash grip correct. Hold the leash long, so hold just the very end of it. Let the dog hit the end of the leash a few times. That's phase one. Phase two is the leash is short. Like this, got my leash grip still turning away from the dog um, and then providing a little bit of upward pressure for the dog to auto sit all right you're not saying sit you're not luring the dog into a sit just provide a little bit of pressure until they sit that takes a lot of patience and you have to make sure that you have that patience patience in a leash that's all it takes to train a dog patience in a leash all right um the last one is a little a short leash turning into the dog okay so the, again giving them corrections if I need to so the that last phase I should be able to walk from here to my end point without having to turn around because I can now give corrections myself to slow the dog down so how I usually do that is let's say that she's supposed to be back here and she's actually forging ahead then I would just say easy and I would kind of soften my knees a little bit and I would give a pop backwards to tell her hey I want you to slow down here okay um, do you have to turn at that point? No, you don't. You can just slow her down and keep on walking. You don't need to slow yourself down or freeze or anything like that. You literally just need to go easy, pop, and keep walking, all right? <clears throat> Good girl. All right, so the next step is integrating the e-collar with that, all right? So typically what I do is when I'm turning away from the dog, they're having to speed up to catch up with me. So I actually use the vibration. When I say, let's go, I'll start tapping that vibration if I feel pressure on the leash, okay? So I'm gonna show you that really quick. I'm gonna get my leash grip right. <clears throat> We're gonna go back to phase one, still have the leash and the prong collar and everything. The only thing I'm changing is when I feel anything on the leash, I'm gonna tap that, um, that vibration to speed her up. Okay, let's go. Good. 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 Hold in that. Good girl. Very nice. Let's go. Tap. 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 competing a little bit for attention we have some guests out here as I come to a stop she should go into a sit if she doesn't I'm actually going to tap the e-collar this time instead of and I'll help her a little bit with the leash I'm going to tap at her baseline here until she offers that sit good very nice okay so you see how much just a couple people can make a difference in what she decides to do and what she decides to put her focus on, which is why I don't immediately go out in public with this stuff. I want to make sure that the dog understands that this is something that we're going to do in a pretty low distraction environment first, and then we incorporate it into everyday life. All right. <clears throat> so review with step one with the e-collar is as I make that turn, instead of letting her constantly hit the end of the leash all the time, I'm gonna say let's go and I'm gonna start tapping that vibration to turn her around faster before she hits the end of the leash. So usually she would hit the end of the leash out here. I'm gonna actually provide a virtual end of the leash right beside me. So I'm gonna say let's go, tap, tap, tap. Yes, quick, tap, 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 little vibration there, let's go. Good. Good. Go. <clears throat> Excellent. She's doing awesome. And as I come to a stop, I'm going to give a tiny bit of pressure 
And I'm going to tap the electric until she sits. So phase two is I'm going to go ahead and shorten the leash here and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Nothing is different about phase two. Excuse me. Nothing is different about phase two except for the length of the leash, okay? So I'm tapping the vibrate to speed her up toward me. I'm tapping the electric to put her into the set. All right, let's go. Tap the vibrate. Let's go. Tap the vibrate. Good girl. Tap the speed up. Good. Good. And as I come to a stop here, a little bit of pressure with the leash and a couple taps on the e cat. And as what you'll see is as you do this, you'll have to do this less and less. Okay. Now, <coughs> I actually did not feed her this morning intentionally because I wanted her to be a little bit distracted and have some food in the pouch here. And ultimately, um, she's doing some of this stuff because like um not auto sitting and things like that because she's never been to this specific location before so there's always new distractions so keep in mind she is a dog she's not a robot she's not a machine she's a dog all right so you have to take that into account all right so again as i say let's go i tap that vibration which is on the front right here and i'm going to say let's go tap tap yes good girl Anytime I feel pressure on the leash, and then as I come to a stop, I'm going to tap that electric until she goes into the sit. Yes, very nice. Okay, and you can watch my fingers. Go back and watch my fingers for that. All right, so for phase three <clears throat> with the e collar, remember I'm going to have to slow her down to get around her. So I'm not going to do this and turn into her, I'm going to turn around her like this. So in order to do that, I have to make sure that she's not in my way or else I'm going to trip over her, right? So I call it being in the pocket, all right? So I want her in this pocket back here. And guess what? If she's if she's too far in advanced and she's out of the pocket and I try to turn into her, it's going to either be a super wide turn because she's pushing me out of the turn or I'm going to trip, all right? So I'm going to actually use the electric this time to slow her down. Now think about phase three with just using the leash earlier. I said, instead of giving the information after you say, let's go, we're gonna give the information before you say, let's go. Why is that? Because if I don't give her some information to tell her that we're gonna turn, then I'm gonna trip, all right? So this time I'm gonna do short leash. We're gonna be turning into the dog and I'm gonna be giving her information before we make that turn. So I'm gonna say, let's go. So we'll vibrate to speed her up and then it's tap right before the turn. Very nice. Very good. Very nice. Okay. I'm going to do a little information. Tap. Let's go. Good. Tap. Yes. Very nice. Okay. Is this boring? Yeah, it's fucking boring. The dog doesn't usually love it, right? She's actually doing pretty great. I did a couple taps on the electric there, okay? You're doing so good. Good girl. You wanna lay down? Do you wanna lay down? You can lay down. Good girl, very nice, okay? And all I did to accomplish that is she understands that when I hold the electric, that she goes into a down, okay? Now, when I say electric, what am I talking about, okay? I don't know if you can read this, but this says five. All right, that's the level that she's on right now. That's five out of 127. So it's still very, very low stimulation. All that I'm looking for is, does the dog feel it? Is there a change in behavior? Can, are they showing me that that makes sense to them, that they understand, okay? So, yes, you're so good. I freaking love you. You're so awesome. Look at that little tum tum. I love you, baby girl. All right. So this is how a dog should act. This is how chill they should be, right? Now, high drive working dogs, they're gonna put lots more attention on you. It's not about that. And if you're a really good dog trainer, you will know that. 
um, it's also about the work that you've put in beforehand. So she can be a very intense dog sometimes, but for the most part, she's super laid back and that's exactly what you're looking for in a service dog. It's someone who, so right here, she actually got up. So I'm gonna give a little bit of pressure here on the leash. I'm gonna hold that baseline until she turns around and lays down again. Lay down. Off. That's a hug. Nice try. Down. And I'm just giving very, very light pressure just to show her the directionality. And then release. Very good. Very nice. I know, I'm nagging you. This is basic stuff, so she already knows it. <clears throat> what I should be doing there. Freak! Good. I'm tapping that vibrate. Yeah! Good girl! You're such a good girl! Oh, you're so awesome. Come here. Come here. Yes! Can I have a hug? Yes! Now you notice she's dragging the leash right now. I have a lot of trust for her. We've been a lot of places without the leash now. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about is the transition from using the leash to not using the leash. So how do you fade that leash out? And that has to be done with great care. You have to be very, very careful. I'm keeping an eye on the time because I have another appointment after this. I have to go to the chiropractor. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, again, I gave her a break a second ago. I don't mind if she's just standing here right now, but as soon as I give her a command, she should be offering that pretty quickly. Sit. Mini sit. A little bit of pressure. Good. Yes, I know you're ready to go lay down for a little bit. We had a good walk, huh? Good girl. All right, down. I'm applying that electric and I'm gonna hold it until she goes down. If she needs a little help from the leash, I'll give it. Yes, good job. And I release as soon as she offers that. As soon as she's finished offering, I release it, okay? So I go, yes, all right? So in general, when do you use the vibrate? When do you use the electric? The vibrate I use to speed the dog up, to pep them up, to get them up. The electric I use to calm them down, slow them down, put them down, right? So if I say, sit down, that would use the electric. If I say, speed up, I want the vibrate. If I say lay down, I want the electric. If I say get up, I want the vibrate. So when I say break, for example, break. Yeah, good girl. Good. Very nice. Good job. Okay, let's go. Good. All I did there is just hold the vibration for like a half second. That was really, really good. Good. And she offered the sit without me having to ask. Okay, down. So I apply that stimulation right before I give the command. <laughs> She's playing games, huh? I'm gonna help her a little bit with the leash. Just a little bit. Down. Yes, okay. And the reason, no. I'm gonna apply a little bit more pressure there. Yes. Girl. All right, so the reason that I apply the pressure of the e-collar before the command is the command then becomes a way to have the dog get out of the pressure. So if I do down, then she knows that I can turn off that stimulation by offering the behavior that I already know, okay? Now, her obedience was already pretty great coming into everything. <coughs> you hear the trucks and stuff passing by. There's a, literally a construction site just next door right here so it's super important that i make sure to incorporate distractions into our training because if i don't guess what she's not going to be very proof all right no a little bit of pressure not a whole lot I'm gonna hold that button until she goes all the way down down
guess. Okay? What that tells me, she needs to go poop. <laughs> right? If she starts to blow me off on stuff, I immediately know she's got to poop. Okay? So, again, a, a, a big... Yeah, you need to go poop. I should have given you a break right after that. That's my fault. All right, break. Go potty. Alright, so I'm going to let her actually drag that leash for a second. Um, a lot of times what we do is in conditioning phase, which is the second phase, it's, it's after the dog gets comfortable with the e-collar and everything, which usually doesn't take very long. Um, four to seven days at the most, um, a couple days at the least. Um, so while we're in conditioning phase, I'm teaching the dog how to turn off this stuff. So she hasn't felt this level and this type of stimulation for a little while. I'm just doing it for the video. Anymore, she really doesn't need it. So she's kind of confused why I am doing it right now. I should have made this video when she was in conditioning phase instead of when we were in proofing, but that's okay. All right, it's not, it's not gonna mess up the dog. <clears throat> and ultimately, I think that that is the biggest fear when people have the remote in their hand is they're afraid that they're gonna fuck the dog up. And that's understandable. Like it, it is a very powerful tool. So I wanna make sure that they understand like it, it can be very aversive, but for the most part, it's very, very subtle, okay? Good. I wanna actually want her to wander for a second so she can go potty. So <clears throat> again, just a quick review. Um, I'm on six right now, it rolled up at some point, but I have my vibrate button here. I have my electric here on the side. These orange buttons right here are for dog number two, okay? So if you can actually pair this to a second dog, all right? Um, to get the dog up, I usually am using the vibrate. To put the dog down, I'm using a using the electric to slow them down, to calm them down, to put them into a down. Um, and typically too, I'm usually using the vibration when I'm just trying to get their attention or when I want them to go, okay, come on, like, let's go, let's move, you know? Um, but I usually start to fade that e collar and put out as we go into that next phase after conditioning called combinations where I start using the tools and treats sometimes and then using the tools or the treats and then sometimes using neither, right? Because I the dog has to actually respond to me um, no matter if I have a prong collar and e collar on them or if they're just completely off the leash. So it's like, it just goes back to if you're using a tool, it's not using it out of laziness, it's using it to make the obedience more solid, right? A lot of times people will say, well, you know, you're just using the e-collar to shortcut the, the learning process. No, it's actually, it takes longer to use the e-collar, but it's making the obedience more solid, right? It's making it more bulletproof. So ultimately, what I want from a dog is what she's doing right now. This is her very usual personality she's just kind of checking things out she's kind of like what's going on here new smells and everything just exploring a little bit right so as she goes home what i'm going to expect from you is <clears throat> i want to make sure that you're doing a couple things every day all right a little bit of shaping or, or some gameplay fetch tug um tag she really loves to like if we get really low and I'll like tag her and stuff and I'll bop her on the nose and she'll just be like, ah, you know, it's, it's so much fun. She's such a fun dog. Tap into that, right? Make it into a game and uh, I'll make it, I'll send you a separate video on the shaping and stuff, but ultimately you should be engaging with the dog in some way that is fun to her um, pretty much every day. All right. There will be times that you don't have time for a walk or the weather is disgusting or it's too hot or cold. Um, you can do the, this stuff inside the house. Um, okay, so she's, what, 20 feet away from me right now. <clears throat> All I'm going to do is I'm going to give her the recall word. I'm going to say her name. Minnie here. Yes, good girl. And I just gave a quick tap on the vibrate there. Good baby. Good girl. Very nice. Break. Now she can go back out into the field. Ooh, you want to get the stick? What a good girl. Okay, that's her prong collar. She's doing awesome. She's now exploring a little bit. She's trying to find stuff to pick up now. Oh, she she caught a cicada. This is one of her favorite things. She'll catch these things and she'll let it like buzz around in her mouth. 
Okay, so let's say I want her to out that. Out. Tap, tap, tap. Out. Yep, she spit it right out. It's right there in the grass. Okay, so I want you to see what I got up to. <clears throat> All right. Now, I don't dial up in the, in the sense that I nag the dog on the way up to a stimulation command or a, a, a aversive correction. I don't go six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and tap the whole time. I just don't do it. I give it a nice firm push knowing the dog and I give a single correction and usually they will immediately out it. Now, did I try it at baseline a couple times? Yes. Did she blow me off? Yes. That's what caused me to go up. Okay. So, yes. Look at her. She's being so good. Okay. That's what the response should be. Now, I want you to see it. She did spit it out. It's right there. All right. Look at that girl. Very nice. <clears throat> so the reason I want to show you all of this stuff is that there will be times where you need to go to an aversive correction and you're afraid to go up there. The, my advice is get used to doing things in a very low distraction environment first so that you know what that correction will look like on the dog, okay? You shouldn't be going out just wondering, like, I wonder what she's going to do about X, Y, and Z. It should be more of a faith thing versus a fear thing, okay? So with her, I trust her. I feel, I know I can turn my back to her. Does she like to catch stuff? Yes, absolutely. But does she also respect me as a handler? Totally, all right? So what I usually do is as the dog is going home, I have the following reintegration schedule set in place. Step one is the first week, I want you to do exactly what I did in this first, in this exercise where we're doing leash in hand, e-collar remote in hand, okay? Leash in hand, e-collar remote in hand, all right? That's week one. Week two, I want the leash on your hip, all right? So it should be hands-free. And all that means is you're not touching the leash with your hand constantly. You can make a little upside, you can make a little in with the leash, and then you're just gonna tuck the leash up through it, and you can tie it off right here, okay? If it was a shorter leash, you'd be able to just tie the end of it off, okay? So it's gonna be on your hip. You can also use a carabiner. There's walking leashes. You can use pretty much whatever, all right? <clears throat> The third week is going to be, so second week again was leash hands-free right here, and then I'm using the e-collar, right? Um, third week is the leash is dragging, so I'm letting her actually drag the leash on the ground, and I'm using the e-collar. And then the fourth week, um, I'm only using the e-collar if I absolutely have to. It's more of a what if, and the, uh, the leash is disconnected. I might still have it in my hand, but I'm not connecting it to the collar, okay? So as you can see, I trust her. She's a great dog. She's done amazing. Her service behaviors are very, very, very good. Um, very reliable. Hug. Yes. Can I have a hug? Give me. Give. Oh, that's a good girl. I love you. Yes, I do. Good girl. And if I was seated, she would still give me a hug. Um, another one that's really fun is love on. So like she likes to put her head on my, on my knee. Oh, yes. Oh, your ears need to be cleaned. Um, so love on, hug, and then typically if I start to get worked up or I act worked up, then she'll start to put her paw on me and stuff and she'll kind of let me know, hey, you need to sit down. You need to breathe for a second. So all of that is super, super important and we'll kind of go through some of these service behaviors when we do your handoff lesson. Okay, good girl. All right, we're gonna load up. I'm gonna show you how I get her up into the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab her leash here. And I'll check the scene first and see who's over there. I don't want people freaking out. All right. So yeah, we got we got a, a, a dude with a dog, a bulldog. Good girl. Come here. Many here? Yeah. Good girl. Okay. So there's a boxery bulldoggy looking thing over there. I'm going to give them a second just so I don't make them uncomfortable. It looks like that might be his service dog. And I'll wait a just a second. There's a guy with a German Shepherd or some sort of Shepherd that's about to get out there. Maybe it's a Collie. Meanwhile, she's just sitting here. What are you doing? You see the peoples? Yeah, she's allowed to look at them. I don't care. She's not going to go anywhere. 
So ideally, I want her to still remain relaxed and stuff while the, the e-collar and the tools and stuff are on. So I'm going to um, give her the let's go command to actually start moving here. Okay, there's a little fluffy dog. All right, let's go. And you can see my truck, easy. Easy. Good girl. She knows where we're going. All right. She wants to get in the middle, but I'm gonna make her, actually, you know what, my, I forgot I changed my kennel set up to where she has to go into the middle because she needs to be able to climb up in there. Good girl. <clears throat> Can you give me some space here? Good girl. Very nice. All right. Um, she obviously, she does awesome. The main reason I wanted you to see this video is that I have a lot of trust for her. And if you don't actually see this with your own eyes, then you don't know that she's capable of it. And then your belief is down. So I wanted you to see this stuff firsthand so that you understand exactly what level of obedience that she's at. Now, this is nothing compared to what we have been doing off leash in public. Um, but we'll show a little bit of that too. So anyway, hope all is well. We'll send this, I'll upload this to YouTube and I'll send it over to you. Talk to you soon.